Hello! Today I am showing you how to make a steampunk bracelet from cogs and a ponytail holder that no one will ever know is a ponytail holder when we are done. And you'll need some beading or crafting wire. I suggest 20 gauge, but you can use 24 if you want. You can get them in round spools that kind of look like this from Walmart. Or you can get them in a ton like this from Joanne Fabrics in the floral section. That's aluminum or you can get them in mini craft stores, but this is called crafting or beading wire. You can also order it from Fire Mountain Gems if you want, where I order a bunch of things. Um, so this is just good to put the things together and make it sturdy. Now, if you wanna use other colors, I've seen this wire in a lot of other colors, and you can do the same obviously with your cogs if you want them in other colors. I chose bronze, but if you wanna do like other colors, I've seen this wire even in black and green and just all different colors it's coated and or you can just get straight copper so it's about your choice if you guys are new do subscribe and check out our spooky playlists by the way I'm Morticia this is our roommate Slappy hanging out with me while I do this Gomez is behind the camera making everything lovely and we're usually a spooky channel and this is still kind of spooky but it's steampunk and I'm doing this because we are obviously into steampunk and I usually don't find a lot of steampunk jewelry that's already made that calls to me like that's nice but I, eh. so I of course designed my own like I tend to do with a lot of things when I don't find exactly what I want look at me in mid like do something because I realized I needed to tell you other things um, right now I'm just cutting a piece of wire to start putting this together or actually finish it because what I did was make most of it because it's all kind of repetitious so if I show you the last step it's the same thing as all the other steps and the first step so it's like you don't need to see it a million times one is good um, this is basically how the bracelet is going to look I need to add one more piece and then close it and that's what you're gonna see me do to see how it's made and how it's going to come out but it's got this cog then this bigger center cog and then it's going to have another cog on the other side like this one. So just the two middle ones and the big one. And you can do it with a lot of little ones. You can do it any design you want. All of my DIYs, I'll link the playlist below for the DIYs, by the way. But all of my DIYs are like, this is what I did, but it's such a flexible design. It's not one of those that you have to do what I'm doing. And this is only the exact way to do this exact thing. It's like you can take that idea and run with it if you have a creative soul and make it your own and do anything you want. You can hang butterflies from these cogs or bats or I mean you could do so many things with this but this is what I chose to do okay to start it or do the middle cog or to finish it like we're about to do you do the same thing all of these cogs have like nice big holes so I'm putting a piece of beading wire to start in this hole because it's the hole opposite the other hole where the other piece is in we're making a link with wire is what we're doing so it's really easy you just fold it over and loop it around and I'm doing it kind of tightly because I don't want big links so I'm putting it right here up against the rim of the cog pretty much because I don't want a big links sticking out so there is that and you can push it down with like pliers when it sticks up here at the end and now we're putting on the last cog now this one happens to have a little kind of eyelet on either side that sticks out or whatever it's called I don't know what it's called but anyway it has a hole they're all full of holes but I'm choosing to use these on either end that stick out but if you use another cog shape it doesn't matter I mean like any cog shape is going to connect in the same way I just connected here through the hole of your choice so we are doing that and yeah, maybe I'll do it this way it doesn't really matter same thing and then you just do what I just did and connect it thusly and making your link again you just loop it around we're going close to the cog because we don't want a lot of excess wire showing and now we are getting another piece of this little little no this is a huge roll a huge roll we're getting another piece of wire because now we're connecting the last part. We don't even need a clasp for this particular design that I chose. And if you did want to do clasps instead and just make the whole thing cogs with a clasp, you would obviously do the same thing and continue to connect and then connect it the same way you would to a toggle or lobster claw clasp or magnetic clasp of your choosing. All right. Um, I don't really measure how much I use when I'm doing these links, by the way. I just, you know, I guess maybe two or three inches because I like to have a little bit extra than a little bit like less and then you're like not really sure that it's going to hold or that it wrapped around enough times. So you can always cut the excess if you go overboard and don't want too much like bulky wrap in the middle here between the two like here. If you don't, if you get too much and it starts to look like, wow, this thing in the middle where I'm connecting, the link is getting bigger than the 
like length then you just obviously cut it off and don't finish so hope that made sense but you want it to look thinner and not like a ton of wire so now we're finishing it off by connecting it to the ponytail holder like this and yes it's a ponytail holder and what it's going to do is make this a stretchy bracelet so that you don't have to mess with clasps and it adds a cool black flare because who doesn't like a cool black flare in their steampunk bracelet i got this kind of stretch bandy idea from hot topic i don't think they used ponytail holders but i'm just super creative like that and you can get them a ton from dollar tree so okay so you just connect it to the ponytail holder here the same way you did to the holes in the cogs and now we're closing our link the same way it's all the same link method and you're just connecting each thing and wrapping it around and that's it now we're going to try it on and you know if you wanted to hang things i just wanted a straight bracelet because i have like a charm i'm wearing right now that's like this hinge skull and i didn't want other charms so a lot of times i want to stack and just have bracelets that go across and only like one charm bracelet on if i'm going to do that so but you if you wanted charms you could add dangles to each cog here like there 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 and things can dangle so that would be cool there's so many different bracelet designs but this is probably about a six and a half to a seven inch I have to measure it but it slipped on really easily so it's got plenty of space to move if you wanted it smaller um, you would use less cogs or you would make even smaller links which I don't know if I could so it's gonna probably be about a seven inch with these size but if you use smaller cogs obviously it would be smaller if you want like a six inch or a tighter bracelet like this but so the links don't stick up I think this is a good size and it's lightweight and it looks cool and I like it and you don't have to mess with the clasp again the stretch in the back just allows it for easy slide on and off doesn't that cool just for a full like turn around of how it looks that's the front and then that's the side here's the back where the black stretch band is and then here so see if I can contort myself all around like a record baby right round 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 I'm wearing it with I'm gonna show you how it'll be stacked that's my skull bracelet that I made with a different bigger ponytail holder so it was just one band and I put the skull on here it's got a hinged jaw so it moves from Fire Mountain Gems I chose green for the band because I'm thinking like potions and skulls and I don't know but anyway so got that and then this and then my garnet bracelet from eBay my 1930s Art Deco bracelet from eBay and my 1880s Jet bracelet from Etsy and so I've got steampunk and 1880s together I love it so that's how that works and I've seen a lot of steampunk bracelets but none of them really spoke to me and this is a good size and it's still lightweight and I really like that it shows up it's not just little tiny charms and it's going to show up and it doesn't drag my arm down so I love it using these stretch bands um, does a lot to keep your bracelets light the ponytail holder thing is just very cool no clasps no knots and lightweight bracelets and these cost me I think a quarter each at our local store and I got a ton of these ponytail holders for a dollar and this wire was like a few dollars at Joann's for a ton so I mean considering all that and that I use them for other things as far as the ponytail holders and the wire I think I made this for under three dollars it's just awesome and doesn't look like a under three dollar bracelet and to make it even more special it's a bracelet no one else has which I like and you can make your own like this or something similar you can order these steampunk cogs online if you look up like um, steampunk cogs for crafting you can get a ton online like for 10 bucks from aliexpress or ebay or even less i'm sure but i was seeing them like selling like hundreds for that so they're very easy to find and again just look up steampunk cogs for crafting and you will find them in all different kinds of sizes shapes designs etc and so yeah um, i will leave that in the write-up along with all the things you'll need for this hope you enjoyed and until next time stay spooky my friends